So Mike, we've just done the shortest leg of our journey on this trip we're doing, uh, about 60 kilometers from Okawa to here in Kumamoto, away no quite far. Um, so obviously, I guess everybody knows the way knows really about Shower. We've had a quick look at some tow side and some good stuff. Yeah. Looking promising. It is looking promising, yeah. Had a, we had a scout around and figured out really there's two ponds of particular interest and uh, I think it could be a good day. Well, these fish look pretty good in here. They're all from the same parent set, um, but the ones in the next house, which I think we'll actually go through first, um, are selected from all the various different parents and then all put into that pond. Um, so that really is a top level stuff. There are some good ones in here, but I think the other ones are really a very different lead to these. Mike sets about convincing Roki Ueno to let him have access to the best coin. I'm currently working on him to try and get some of these. He's pretty keen for me to come back and see them with a knee side. Um, which defeats the object of trying to get hold of toe side. So, working at the moment, but hopefully, we'll be in luck. Even through the rippled surface of the pond, the quality of these shower is apparent. As you can see, the pond is now minus one fence panel. Um, he's agreed to let me have a look at some of the fish um, and hopefully I will get hold of all the ones I want. I've no idea about rice, but they will be expensive. But I have to say, these are probably the best show of, that I've ever seen here. Much better than last year's. A bowl is prepared with a little anaesthetic just to calm the koi, prevent any disasters from them jumping from the bowl. On the evidence of this one, probably a wise precaution. After a few minutes, Mike has several of Ueno San's best Hatagoi shower in a bowl for consideration. I'm liking all three. Um, there's a few more in there I like as well. Personally, for me, it's this one that really does it. Um, but all three are very good. This one, I'm not quite so sure of the colour as to where it's future lies, but the other two, I think, are pretty safe and predictable. Mike returns the one whose colour he's unsure about to the pond, joking with the way no sand will probably be his number one knee side. <laughs> A couple more are added to the bowl. Yeah, I really like that last one too. Very, very um, quality is really high, but I think the sumi makes it really interesting. The sumi is going to give it a lot more kind of interest and balance later on. It's particularly nice. Mike and Ueno San study the pond discussing other Tosai shower. As Mike searches for more, Ueno San studies those already bold. Five of his best genuine Tatagoi shower. 
These toasts say are the potential future of the farm. Koi that could go on and take prizes at shows in the future. Well, I spent about the last 15 minutes trying to get a price. That's where we're at and uh, we'll kind of stop on that in a moment because firstly he doesn't want to sell all of them and secondly uh, he's just got no idea at the moment just kind of mulling it over and trying to figure it out well, I'm thinking I'm going crazy two of them really I think one I think you're going to struggle to get big so that's not really of so much interest to me and the Meritem here the fish is good but what the sumi is going to do is a bit of a mystery um, I like the colour and kiwa I like the body type I like the head I like the pattern but the sumi I have no idea what's going to happen with it the other three koi I really like Eventually the deal is done and Mike gets the toaster he wants. I'm smiling but only just. Um, I've got the three best ones. I've not bothered with the other two. But um, the fish are extremely good. But a little bit more expensive than I would have hoped. But they are good. But the trouble is when you're buying this kind of fish, if you're trying to get the best fish when they're toaster, to a large part you're actually really paying a future price, you're paying like a lease high price anyway. Um, so if I didn't buy these, the chances are if I came back in the autumn I might well just pay the same money for them, but the chances are that by the autumn time they'll be sold out anyway, so there wouldn't be an opportunity to buy them. So it's one of those things that if it's the right coin and you want it, you've got to basically pay more money for it when you get the opportunity to buy it. So. Like I say, we've got these three. So I'm happy. But they'll be a challenge to sell. Um, quality wise, I think they'll be easy to sell, but they are going to be expensive. But say la vie, as we say. I think all three of these are particularly good. Uh, they're all from the same parent. Uh, the body type of all three fish is very good. Um, very good for getting big. This one over here is going to be harder to get big but I think it will still get a pretty decent size. Um, I would guess the fish is now probably about 35, 36 centimetres um, and this I would expect to be in my pond for example I would say 53 cm something like that I would think as an Isai. The other two I think in fairness with the body type they've got would probably do best part of 60 centimetres as an Isai. Um, all three have got I think particularly good colour quality, a good kiwa, the sashi is also very good. Um, this one's particularly good, the, the sashi on it's really ideal all the way through, the kiwa is really nice all the way through, uh, body type's very strong. It's slightly hollowed out behind the pectorals um, on the body line, but I think if you look at the face as well, the face is slightly thin in the size of the face. And personally, I think this is something that you can just build up by feeding and raising the fish well. I think the fish is basically growing relatively quickly because of its metabolism and not really putting on a lot of weight in the face or in that area of the body either. So I think in the future it should be no problem. Um, this one's body line is, is very easy to understand, the body line is very good. The height and length of the fish is good, same with this one as well. Um, and I think in the future, all three, I think, is quite predictable as far as what the Tumi development is going to be. Um, and this one, if we look at this one, although you've got a kind of imbalance as far as the pattern goes, what you'll find when the fish grows up, the Tumi on this side will make up for the lack of colour. And this is something that I really like to show up. Where you get like an old tunic pattern on a fish where it balances up the lack of another colour. And the same in this one really, this central area is a bit lonely for colour but the sumi is going to make up for that and put a lot of balance back into the fish. Um, and that, that's something I really like. In, in actual fact all three are similar in that regard, they're all going to gain balance when the sumi comes up. 
but we shall see, I think these will do well. Well Mike, we're here at our final stop on Masako Koi Farm, 400 kilometers or so from Kumamoto where we were last night. Um, obviously everybody knows Omosako, Shiratsuri. Uh, also obviously they're now doing other varieties. What's your main interest here? What are we looking at? Uh, Shiratsuri, but specifically today we're going to look at offspring from a parent called Panda Junior. Um, they are their tatigoi, the fish that they don't want to sell, but hopefully I better get hold of just a few of them. So uh, we shall see. Takashi Omosako and his son Takahiro start netting the pond containing the farm's tatigoi offspring for the parent Panda Junior. As the net is secured, Mike gets his first close-up look at the toso. There's a lot of nice ones in there. Uh, quality is very good. Um, patterns, there's quite a lot of good patterns as well. Um, my criteria for Shiritsuri is very fussy though. Um, there's a lot of things I look for in Shiritsuri uh, to try and avoid the pitfalls of them going wrong. Uh, because they are a tricky variety, a little bit like Showa. So, some things you've got to be very, very critical of when you're doing selection of this kind of fish. Otherwise, you can find that the failure rate is higher than the success rate. So, uh, at first, first glance, how they look good. Takahiro prepares a bowl of water and removes some of the Showa Toso which the farmer now producing. As Mike scours the sea of black and white, it seems almost impossible to spot and then successfully net any prospective purchases. Mike starts netting this Tosai Shiritsuri in small batches to see more clearly before Takiro returns them to the pond with a sock net. I'm looking for obviously pattern or an indication of what's going to be a good pattern. Um, but also one thing that I really like with Shiritsuri is when you've got nice clean areas of white when you haven't got any small parts of sumi. So some of them at a glance look good but my feeling is that maybe when the fish get bigger they'll end up with small bits of scattered sumi in addition to the pattern that you're hoping is going to come up. Um, so that I try and avoid. So it's kind of difficult um, getting good shiritsuri, but body line is really important, head shape is really important. Uh, to me, motoguro and the actual style of the motoguro is quite important. Um, and also the motoguro gives you an indication of kind of confirming or reassuring you of the sumi quality. Um, the other thing I like as well is a good definition of kiwa um, and a nice style of sashi. I don't like kiwa that's all messy and incomplete uh, because it's difficult for it to become really attractive I think later on. Another thing I think that's important with Shiro Zuri is the head pattern. Um, it's because of that I always try to avoid ones that have got completely white heads where there's no sumi underlying and likewise I also avoid ones that have got completely black heads or where it appears that it's going to come through too heavy later on um, because the shiro is very really with too much sumi on the head is just not really so attractive later on so it needs some kind of interest as far as a head marking goes. As Mike continues sorting through the pond, Takashi San inspects the koi that he has already selected. As we've seen previously, checking the fins for Oibweshi to attempt to identify the sex of the koi. Hello. 
A Masako Sang gives an early indication that a couple of these toasts I may simply not be for sale. Mike looks relaxed, knowing there's always a chance. As the last koi is inspected and subsequently rejected, Mike has again been through several hundred tatakoi tosai to arrive at just a handful or two of potential purchases. Well, this is the final bunch as it were. Um, one fish I put in here just for curiosity's sake um, and that being this one this isn't actually the kind of fish I would buy um, but I think this one's sumi quality in the future will be particularly good but it's bad for me to buy but it's also bad for them to sell this fish um, because any of these fish are going to be very expensive but that particular kind of fish, that kind of sumi is a little bit risky maybe it will become the best one out of the pond maybe it will turn out to be no good and the problem is if they sell it with a high price and the fish turns out no good it doesn't reflect very well on them um, so this kind of fish they wouldn't sell anyway um, that kind of sumi uh, because it is just so mysterious but what I'm looking for anyway is something that will provide uh, the hobbyist that eventually buys the fish with something that's reliable, predictable um, and really does what it says on the tin, as we say. Now this one really is about the most interesting one to me. Um, the quality of it looks pretty good. The body type and head is really nice. The fins are good also. The motoguro is also pretty good. Um, other ones that I like are this slightly smaller one. I think the style of this is really nice. And um, this one that's got heavy asumi at the moment I think is also very nice. One thing as well that's worth kind of bearing in mind with this is the size of the fish in relation to the siblings and for that reason this one I wouldn't actually bother with. It doesn't mean it's not going to get so big but the head isn't so long and isn't so broad in the mouth and for that reason I think this one would be a little bit of a challenge to grow big. If you want something to get big, really it needs to be something like the heavier one here. I think that kind of body type is good for getting big, along with this one here. It's also very good for getting big. The height of the fish is good. The length of the body is good and long. The body is also quite thick as well. Um, those kind of fish, I think, are very, very easy to grow. And if you pay a lot of attention to the body type that they've got, hopefully you'll get a fish that, when it grows up, it won't just become short and fat. Uh, like a lot of Shirazuri and Shoa do. Another thing that's also quite important with Tosai in general is what the breeders call Tega. Tega is literally means hand. And one thing I think you should always check with small fish is the actual shape of the fins themselves and in particular the first rate of the fins. And in this regard, this one unfortunately is going to have to go back. Sorry, not that one. It's heavy one rather. Uh, because the rate, the both front rays don't come to the end of the fins. So where the ray stops, you can see the tip of the fin then curves a bit sharper. Um, this kind of fish, when it grows up, you'll probably find that the fins just won't be quite right when it's big. The tip of the fin will probably curl down a little bit. So that one's going to go back. Another thing which I think is a small detail that's worth paying attention to with young Shiritsuri, particularly Tosai, but also with Nisai is an indication of colour in the iris um, or in the eyeball itself because if you get any kind of yellow tinge to the iris of the fish what you'll generally find is when the fish gets older and bigger it will become a stronger orange colour um, 
and in my experience also, fish that have got a little bit of colour in the eyes can quite often develop secondary heat. Um, so for me it's a good indication, if the eyes are good, um, that hopefully the fish will be free of any secondary heat. At this stage I think what I would need to do is speak to Omo Sako Sam because I'm absolutely sure he won't let me have all of these fish. Um, so rather than trying to make a final selection and then find out that perhaps I end up with nothing, um, I'll ask him now what the situation is with them, whether he'll sell them or not. Um, because this pond that we've just pulled up is the larger of two ponds, uh, which is the entire Tatigoy from Panda Junior. And uh, all of these fish are actually going to the mud pond. So Takahiro has already told me that um, as far as he's concerned, this one and this one are out of the question. Um, but I shall ask his father and see what he says. This is a usual thing. Um, when you find this kind of fish, is it usually results in the breeders going off and having a discussion about it um, as to whether they want to sell or what kind of price. So this is pretty not pretty much a norm. I really like this one. Very, very interesting. Shumi quality is really nice. Body is really good. Head shape is really nice. Motoguro is pretty nice. The Motoguro should pull back a little bit when the fish grows up. Um, should get a little bit better. But overall the fish is really good. Yeah, this one's a chancy one. The body is really the best of the whole lot. The head's also very good. Um, it's hard to say whether it's going to get much sumi on the head when it grows up um, and it's also hard to predict how much sumi will come up around the shoulder area. There's sumi underlying but everything that's there won't necessarily come up. So it's a, a, quite a big element of gamble with that one. And things like this one and this one I think are very easy to understand. Um, and this one I think reasonably easy as well. But smaller one I don't know the style of it's particularly nice pattern perfect mm. pattern mm. very perfect this is it the final selection the four that I'm going to go for one of them is it's hard to say how big it's going to get um, it's hard to judge in that regard uh, the other three I think are very safe and very high quality but the reason I'm going to go with the smaller one is because the style of the fish is just so good the body's a little bit of a mystery the bigger it gets the more easy it's going to be to understand so if it gets another three or four centimeters on the body type might change a little bit the face might fill out a little bit more as well and then the fish will become a lot more predictable but right now there is a, an element of chance with it but like I say the style of it is just so good um, it's really got to be in on the final four so Mike sunset here in uh, Hiroshima Amasako Koi farm and it's also the end of our trip uh, five six days have been going around five, six farms we've been to. Um, I think we said at the beginning that buying high-class tosai was difficult, never easy to get, the breeders don't necessarily want to sell them, and I think we've seen that's obviously the case on this trip. Um, for you, what are your highlights? Mm. Highlights really, I think, has to be Ueno. That was really a surprise yeah, for yeah. me, um, and I think you also. Um, other than that, on the whole I think this trip was a little bit difficult because it wasn't so much obtaining good fish that was the problem it was actually the case that I think this year there's just not so many good fish around mm -hmm. uh, many breeders I think the results of last year's breedings have been sort of not so good um, I think Omo Sako has been good 
Um, Okawa has been good, but only with a few fish. And yeah. I think all around it is just a difficult one yeah. really this time. But so you're happy with the koi you've got? Overall, you think you've got some good yeah. prospects. Overall, very happy. Um, and in the end, I think price-wise, I think that side of it was also okay. So. All in all, I think okay. a good trip. So, well, so let's say that brings us to the end of this this DVD. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed seeing the farms and learning something about some of the koi that Mike's been buying. Mm -hmm.